few in the Imperial Navy will in their entire careers peer through the darkness in space to set eyes upon the juggernauts that we are going to be discussing today. These monsters are a rare sight, and often only a handful will be available in any battle fleet in the Imperium, barring very specialized forces. Typically, cruisers are more common vessels seen in the Imperium, and even a grand cruiser is exceptionally rare to see. Let alone one of these ancient relics. The battleship is the ultimate weapon to be displayed by the Imperium of Man, barring incredibly rare spectacles such as the vaunted Gloriana class, or the one-of-a-kind monster known as the Phalanx. These invaluable vessels can turn the tides of a campaign by their presence alone, or win battles before a shot is fired as opposing forces realize the futility of their efforts without something of substance to challenge these true ships of the line. In this video, we are going to be examining the four main battleships made available to the Imperial Navy in Battlefleet Gothic. The Emperor-class battleship is the most famous of these stablemates. The name alone is synonymous with the Imperium of Man. These vessels are often utilized as flagships for whole sectors and fleets, if there are any battleships to be found at all. The time it takes to produce or refit one ranges from centuries to millennium, and takes up much of the work of an extensive dockyard, barring the largest in the Imperium. The Emperor-class battleship's keen advantage in battle is its extensive array of fighter, bomber, and boarding craft that are held within its port and starboard bays, numbering four squadrons per bay. It carries the advantage of being very heavily armored as well, and supporting extensive void shields. In-game, this would give it a total void shield rating of four. It also possesses five turrets for defense, and has enough firepower to ward off most foes foolish enough to get within its range, with a series of powerful batteries, even from the prow and dorsal mounts, something not all ships in Battlefleet Gothic can do. Its biggest drawback, though, is that it is not as heavily armed as some of its contemporaries who do not have squadrons, and also its relatively slow speed. Moving 15 centimeters per turn means it will struggle to keep up with the rest of the Imperial fleet and to maneuver into advantageous positions unless the rest of the fleet throttles itself to try to add layers of protection to this beast at the heart of the fleet. The Imperial Retribution class battleship is the Imperial Shark among the ocean of the stars. It is a battleship in the purest sense of the word, completely lacking additional craft, and thriving and surviving on the pure power of its guns, thrusters, and armor. Though perhaps not as famous as its Emperor-class stablemate, it is an extremely dangerous vessel. Though not always the flagship, they are the anchor which holds more powerful fleets together, closing the distance with enemy fleets and giving them the raw firepower the Imperial Navy is known for. Much like other battleships, these vessels, even when they can be produced, if they can be produced or retrofitted, take generations to complete. The Retribution class is simple. Guns, shields, and armor. It has four shields, strong armor, and four turrets offering its defense. Its firepower, however, is extensive and impressive. Dorsal-mounted lances offer backup fire to its enormous macro batteries, doubling the firepower of the Emperor class on its left and right firing arcs. It also boasts an impressive torpedo attack with its prow as well. Its biggest asset beyond pure firepower, though, is its speed. This vessel moves 20 centimeters, keeping pace with cruisers and offering them protection simply by not having to be managed quite as much by the rest of the fleet. Unlike others, it's hard to nail down its specific weakness, 
beyond its lack of fighter craft. It is the battleship of battleships in the Imperium. A rarity in the Imperium, a rarity in the extreme, is the Apocalypse-class battleship. These ancient vessels utilize technology no longer available to the Imperium, and at best, the machines can be maintained, but never replicated or produced again. Any one of these impressive giants lost are lost forever. Thought to be the precursor to the Retribution class, they are a horrifying sight for any enemy admiral to face down due to its incredibly powerful, technologically sophisticated armaments. As implied, the Apocalypse comes with an incredible array of weaponry. It boasts a prow-mounted Nova Cannon, an incredibly dangerous weapon most certainly. It also only mounts traditional batteries on its dorsal region, and the entirety of the rest of its weapons complements are heavy lance batteries, the heaviest in the Imperial Navy. These weapons reach out and blast enemy battleships with lances, bypassing much of their defenses and hitting incredibly reliably, even at range, with a massive firepower rating of 6 per lance on either the port or starboard. It's incredibly well armored as well, and it's complemented by 4 turrets and 4 shields. Its primary weakness, much the same as other Imperial battleships, is its slow movement coming in at only 15 centimeters and potentially being outrun by its own fleet or outmaneuvered by enemies brave enough to challenge it. Finally, another ancient design, the Oberon-class battleship is the last on this list as documented by the Battlefleet Gothic Core rulebook and the Armada Expansion rulebook. The Oberon is in theory a class of vessel designed to do anything. Fighter bays, lances, batteries, the only Imperial systems it lacks are torpedoes and the terrifying Nova Cannon. It's a precursor or early model of the Emperor-class battleship as well. These vessels are uncommon to the point of obscurity, and they are also as irreplaceable as the vaunted Apocalypse-class. Weaponry-wise, it boasts an abundance. Lances and macro batteries are both on the port and starboard, as well as dorsal batteries and prow batteries. It also boasts two squadrons per bay on its port and starboard launch bays. In terms of protection, it is shielded much like the Emperor, with four shields, great armor, and five turrets. The Oberon, however, in theory has the ability to do anything, but is the definition of a jack-of-all-trades. It lacks the firepower of the Apocalypse and Retribution classes, and lacks the suffocating squadrons which the Emperor can deploy. It also suffers the same weaknesses of most of the Imperial battleships insofar that it is a slow-moving vessel. Impressive as it may be, it still may be the weakest candidate of all of the ships of the line in the game for the Imperial Navy. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. With that, I'll catch you all in the comments section below.